absolutely love these pillows. Hey, what's up guys? My name is The Cherno and welcome back to my C++ series. So today we're back on the couch. You guys seem to dig that. Didn't have much time to go anywhere exciting for this video. However, the content is gonna make up for that because today we're gonna be learning all about how to use Visual Studio to debug our code. Now in planning this series, unfortunately, I have the difficult decision of trying to decide which video goes where, in what order, and all of that stuff. A lot of these videos kind of depend on each other, so if you see me mention things in certain videos that I haven't mentioned in previous videos, it doesn't mean that I've kind of glossed over the topic, it just means that it's probably gonna come later. That being said though, debugging is just such an important part of programming, and not just programming, but of learning. Because if you know how to debug your code, you're actually going to understand how the program works and how the computer actually runs your code. So I thought I'd cover debugging pretty early on in the series because I'm actually going to use a lot of what we cover today to explain how the rest of the language and how computer programs work in general. In this video specifically, like all of my C++ videos, I'm going to be using Visual Studio. However, these concepts apply to pretty much any IDE out there. Most IDEs will support exactly what I'm going to show here today, just might be in a different place. But basically, we're gonna be covering two important features. Or three, is it three? I don't even know how many. We can probably break this thing into two parts. Breakpoints, see that joke earlier was funny because breakpoints is, is a big part of debugging. And looking at memory. So breakpoints and reading memory, those are kind of the two big parts of debugging. And of course, you will be using them together. So in other words, you'll set breakpoints in order to read memory. So what's the point of debugging? What do I mean when I say, let's debug our code? The word debug means to de bug, right? So to remove bugs from our code. In order to remove a bug from our code, we have to diagnose what's wrong with our program. And that part can actually be pretty tricky, even if you're well experienced in the language. At the end of the day, you have to remember that the computer is always right. And by always, I mean like 99% of the time. It's very unlikely that you did something correctly and then the computer just didn't work as expected. It's usually, it's usually you who made the mistake. And coming to realize that is something that is very important for programmers. You will soon learn that the computer is pretty much always right. So really this is all about figuring out your mistake. What did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? So breakpoints, reading memory, let's take a look. So here I have a pretty simple Visual Studio project. I've just got my main file here, which calls log. This is the log.cpp and log.h that we made in the previous video, in the video about C++ header files. What we're going to do first of all is we're going to set a breakpoint and then we're gonna step through the execution of our program. So what are breakpoints? So a breakpoint is a point in our program at which the debugger will break. And the word break here just means pause. So what will happen is we can basically set a breakpoint on any line of code in our program. And when, when the execution hits that line, it will pause. It will suspend that execution thread, or in our case, the entire program, and let us take a look at the state of this program. And by state, I'm really referring to memory. We can pause our program and just take a look at what is going on in its memory. Remember, the memory of a running program is pretty much all it's got. It's what every variable is set to, it's what function will be called next, everything. When you, when you break it down, memory is all, all that there is, really. So being able to view memory is incredibly useful in diagnosing what the issue is with your program. Because by viewing the memory, you can see what every variable is set to and be like, hey, this variable shouldn't be set to this value. Something's obviously wrong. You can also step through the execution of your program line by line. So I can put a breakpoint on line five and then just, just hit a button and the program will advance just one line of code further into line six. You can also step into functions to see where they'll take you. There's just there's so much you can do with breakpoints. It's amazing and it's incredibly useful. And if you're programming without this, then I don't even know what you're doing. So back to Visual Studio. In order to set a breakpoint in Visual Studio, you can either just hit F9 and it will set a breakpoint on that current line of code. Or you can click on this sidebar anywhere on the sidebar here. Just click once and you'll set a breakpoint. Obviously, if you do something like set a breakpoint on line three, that's not really going to work because there's nothing on line three that's ever going to get executed. So make sure you set a breakpoint on code that actually will be executed, on lines that will actually be hit. So line six, of course, will be hit because that's the first line of code in our program. And then all you have to do is run your code through the debugger. One tip is to make sure that you're in debug mode because if you're in release mode, 
the compiler will actually change the way that your code looks and your breakpoints might not ever get hit because your program has been rearranged. We'll talk more in depth about what release mode actually does and all that stuff later, but the gist is if you're debugging, just make sure you're in debug mode. If we then hit the local Windows debugger, which ensures that we're actually running with the debugger attached, our program will run and you can see that the focus from our program is actually stolen back to Visual Studio and we change into this kind of different alternate layout along with a big yellow arrow on that breakpoint indicating that that is currently where the instruction pointer is at in our program. The main areas to look at here are basically this continue button which will continue executing our program like normal. And then we have a bunch of buttons over here that let us step into, step over, or step out. Now these three buttons are going to control exactly what happens next in our program. So step into is going to step into the current function that is on this line of code if there is a function. So in this case, if I hit step into onto log, we would actually step into the log function so that we could see what it does. Step over is going to step over to the next line of code in this current function. And step out is actually going to step out of this current function and take us back to whatever called this function, which in this case, since this is the main function, will be the C standard library. You can also use F11 to step into, F10 to step over, or Shift F11 to step out. So let's step into this log function and see what happens. I'm gonna hit F11. Okay, check this out. So we step into this function where at the very beginning of the stack frame, we haven't actually begun executing any code here. We're just setting up the function stack frame. We can hover our mouse over this message variable and check this out. It tells us that it's set to hello world. So that's the second part of debugging, right? We're reading memory now. How cool is this? If I hit F10, it's going to bring us up to this line of code. Now, the fact that the yellow arrow is on this line of code means that it actually hasn't executed this line of code yet. It's just, it's on there, it's about to, as soon as we hit a button like F10 or Shift F11 to get out of the function or F5, which will continue our program. As soon as we hit one of those, it's going to execute that line of code and possibly more. But the yellow arrow means that it is on that line of code. It hasn't actually executed that line of code yet. So if I bring up my program right now, you can see that that hello world message has not been printed. But check this out, if I hit F10, and then check back, look at that, we've printed hello world because we've called that stdc out function and it actually has printed that text to the console. We've executed that function. So by setting breakpoints and by stepping through our program, we can literally run our entire program line by line, which of course is really cool and really useful when you're trying to figure out what you've done wrong. Anyway, back here, if we keep hitting F10, you'll see that we'll eventually get back to our main function. F10 again will bring us to the next line of code in our main function, and this will kind of keep going. If I hit F5, it's going to continue running our program as usual, and I can just hit enter to close my program as if it was just running normally. All right, so pretty cool stuff. And even though this might look really simple, this is actually really all there is to it. I mean, I've shown you guys pretty much everything. I'll show you some more examples so that you really get it but that's kind of the gist of it. So let's go ahead and make some more variables to make things interesting. I'm going to make an integer called a, set it equal to eight. I'm going to do a plus plus, which will increment a by one. So in other words, it will set a to be nine. I'm going to create a C string here by just typing in const char string equals hello. I'm going to write a very basic for loop here that's going to iterate through this string and print each character out on a separate line and then I'll leave in my log hello world for good measure. So if I run my program with no breakpoints at all, just to see what even happens, you'll see that we get basically something like this, where we have hello and then hello world. All right, now let's step through this line by line. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint at the very top here on int a and just hit F5. All right, cool, let's take a look at what a is. What, why is it negative 858 million? Well, remember that yellow arrow doesn't mean that we've actually run this code. We're actually just about to run it, but we haven't actually executed line six, the line that actually creates and sets that A variable. So what the debugger is currently showing us is what the memory where A would be is showing right now. And since we haven't actually set that variable to anything yet, it's just uninitialized memory, which means that this value is just showing us whatever that memory actually contains. This would be a fantastic time to bring up these three important windows that we have here. Autos, locals, and watch. Autos and locals will basically just try and show you local variables or variables that it thinks might be important to you. Watch, on the other hand, lets us actually monitor variables. So what I can do is I can type in A, which is the name of the variable, and hit enter. 
and you can see that it's showing me the value of A. If I also want to view what string is, I can also put that in and it's going to show me what string is. Now, of course, we haven't initialized this memory yet, so it's currently it's completely useless, it's just garbage. But as we step through our program, these values will update to show what's actually in the memory. Speaking of memory, there's actually a view that we can use to view the entire memory of our program. Now, of course, it's called a memory view. So if we go debug, windows, memory, and memory one, we're gonna be greeted by this weird looking panel here that's going to show all of the memory of our program. So on the very left, we see the memory addresses. In the middle, we see the actual data, the actual values represented in hexadecimal format. And on the right, we see the ASCII interpretation of those numbers. If you want to locate where this A variable actually is stored in the memory of your program, you need to know its memory address. And to do that, we can simply type in ampersand and A. So the ampersand in front of a variable name will actually get that variable's memory address. If we hit enter, we're going to be taken to the memory address of that A variable, which in this case is a whole bunch of Cs. So that number, that CC number, is actually a hexadecimal value. If you wanna see what that is in decimal, you can bring up a calculator. If we switch to the programmer view, we can type in the hexadecimal value. If I just click on hexadecimal here, type in CC, as you can see what that value is in decimal, it's 204. So 204, CC, why is it set to that? Isn't that memory just supposed to be random? A whole bunch of CCs seems kind of specific. Now that's the cool thing about debug mode and also why debug mode slows down our program. It's because the compiler will actually make our program do certain things, certain extra things, that's going to make our lives easier when it comes to debugging. So for example, the fact that this memory is a whole bunch of CCs means that it is uninitialized stack memory. So what's actually happened is the compiler knows that we're making, we're trying to make a variable, but we haven't initialized it yet. So what it's going to do is actually fill that memory with CC. So that if we're debugging our code and something goes wrong, we can look at the memory, we, we can see that it's set to CC, and we can be like, oh, of course, I never initialized that variable. That's why this is going all wrong. Now by doing extra things like that, like setting our memory to CC before we initialize it, Obviously our program is doing extra things that are going to slow it down. So we don't want to be doing that in release mode when we actually release our program, when we ship our game. We don't want to be doing all that. But when it comes to debugging, it's so useful. So if I come over here and I hit F10, a lot of things are going to happen. One other thing you can do actually in this watch window is right click and select hexadecimal display. And so now you can see that the value of A actually is a whole bunch of C's. Which of course means that A is currently uninitialized stack memory. Let's go back to our non-hexadecimal display and let's hit F10 and a number of cool things are gonna happen. So namely, in this watch window, our value has changed to A. It's also red, which indicates that it's changed since the last breakpoint. Our instruction pointer has moved down, which is showing that it's now about, about to execute this line of code. It hasn't done it yet. No, 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 not yet, but it's about to. And then if we look in our memory view, you can also see that these four bytes of memory have been set to eight. By the way, I should probably mention that every two digits here is equal to one byte. That's also why we're viewing this in hexadecimal, because if we do that, every two hexadecimal digits are always going to align to be one byte of memory. So we can tell just by looking at this that these eight hexadecimal digits are four bytes of memory. And you can see that it's been set to eight. So that's what we're doing. That's all we're doing right now. We've paused our program and we're taking a look at its state we're reading its memory. If I hit F10 again, we're going to advance. This is now set to nine. It's set to nine here as well. Pretty cool stuff. You can see that string is still uninitialized stack memory, but check this out. I'm about to initialize it, aren't I? So if I hit F10, it's initialized. Because this is an actual pointer, it's also telling us the memory address of that string. So if I was to copy this memory address here from the watch window, and paste it into my memory view and hit enter. Look at this, I'm taken to these bytes, which in this ASCII interpretation, you can see that it says, hello. And what's really interesting is that if you actually keep reading, you can see that our program literally contains memory close to this hello variable that says, stack around the variable was corrupted. The variable is being used without being initialized. Obviously our program containing strings like stack around the variable was corrupted in its memory is not something that will exist in release mode, but it's just another great example of what will actually happen in debug mode to help you debug your program. Okay, cool, so things are getting real interesting here because we've run into this for loop. What's going to happen if I keep advancing through this? Now we haven't covered for loops or any kind of control flow statements in this series yet. The next few videos are probably gonna deal with it. 
I really wanted to cover the debugger first so that we can actually step through these control flow statements in the future and see how they work and you guys already know how to use this debug view. But basically a for loop is gonna do stuff multiple times. So if we step through this program, you can see that i is set to zero. It's going to grab index zero from this string, which is going to be the very first character in the string, which is a capital H. If we hit F10, we can hover our mouse over C and see that it's set to H. We can also come over here into watch and just type in C and you can see we're now taking a look at what C is. When I hit F10, it's going to log that letter to the console. And then when it gets back to this curly bracket, it's going to run this comparison. It's going to compare, is I less than five? And then if so, it's going to increment I and then jump back into here. So if I hit F10, you can see we jump up here to do the comparison. If I hit F10 again, we've done the I++, I is now one. We're going to do the same thing all over again, except this time I is one. So it's going to grab the second character, which is the letter E, and continue on. In this case, C is equal to E. You can see that it's changed here in our watch. If we come up here, do ampersand C and hit enter, you can see we have 65, which is the letter E, according to our ASCII view. Fantastic, I can keep running through this and everything's gonna be great. Now suppose that I wanted to exit this for loop and maybe jump to this log function. I don't really care about stepping through this. I get how it works. How do I get out of this for loop? If I try and step out or hit shift F11, it's actually gonna exit the whole function. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna kind of keep running the for loop and then stop here. How do I do that? Well, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is put a breakpoint on where you want to stop next. And if I hit F5 or press the continue button up here, it's actually going to run my program until it hits the next breakpoint, which in this case is this log function. So by this point, you can see that the memory that used to make up this C variable is set to O, it's actually still active. That memory is still there even though we've gone out of scope and we'll talk about that in the future. But the memory is set to the very last character of the word hello. And if we bring back our program, you can see it's printed up that entire hello word. And then we're about to execute this hello world log. If I hit F10, we're going to jump to the next line of code here. It's going to print hello world. Now we've actually paused execution of this program because we had a breakpoint here and I just hit F10. So if I press enter here, nothing's actually going to happen. I need to hit F5 and then our program will close because it is going to still detect that enter press. So that's it. A fantastically simple overview of basic debugging. There's going to be a lot more to this, but what I just showed in this video is going to be the basis of how we actually debug our code. Remember, a program is really just made up of memory. Even the instruction pointer, which is where in our program we actually are executing code, and the actual code that we're executing, all of that is stored in memory. So being able to view our memory is really all we have and really all we need. And by setting breakpoints, it lets us pause our program at a given time, at a given line of code, and actually inspect it and take a look to see what all of our variables are set to. Which, of course, is going to be incredibly useful when you're running code. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Let's see if we can beat our like record. I don't know, I think it's about 800, so let's just, let's just, let's just smash that. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I've been posting some pretty cool photos on Instagram lately, so you're just, you're, you're just not gonna wanna miss that at all. And if you really like this series, you can support me on patreon.com forward slash the channel. Now, the cool thing about this is by doing so, you'll get access to early drafts of videos. And the cool thing about those early drafts is not everything in the draft makes it to the final video, to this. So you get to see stuff that might be cut from the final video, exclusive. And as well as that, of course, you are supporting this series and you're enabling me to make more of these videos more often, which is pretty awesome. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Yeah. <sighs>